Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracks will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the Monday edition here at Bible Track Echoes. Thanks so much for joining us. My Bible is open once again to the book of Leviticus. Leviticus chapter 21, we have once again jumped back into our study here in the book of Leviticus. So far, we've looked at each and every one of the chapters, and normally we take just one broadcast per chapter. That will not be the case for chapter 21, though. So right now, if you can, reach over and get your own copy of God's Word and open to Leviticus chapter 21, and you may want to get something on which you can take some notes. We're going to be giving some things that I think are valuable for us to understand the chapter and make some application to our lives. In my hand also is a gospel tract. That word tract is spelled T-R-A-C-T, a gospel tract. By that, I mean a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. It is an evangelism tool, a witnessing tool. I just got off the phone before I came in here from a man in Brooklyn, New York, who's not been saved very long, but he is so excited. He got a sample pack out of our tracks. He's given them all out, and he said, can I get just 10 of the tracks of the 41, 42 tracks? There's 10 of them that I really like. Can I get a bulk of those, just those 10? And I said, sure, you can. I was happy to be the one that took the phone call. Here's a man who's found out that he's not real sharp as far as knowing a lot of Bible doctrine yet. He's going to a good Bible preaching church, but he's found that he can share the gospel through gospel track. I want to tell you about one of the tracks here in just a minute, but let me lead into the broadcast this way. Most of this week, my title for our broadcast will be this, Living in a Glass House. Living in a Glass House. Now, we'll say more about that on tomorrow's broadcast, but here we go. One of the most often heard chants of people 50 years of age and older is this, I hate change. (laughs) Well, honestly, all of us at every age, at some point in our lives, we hate things to change. The good news for those who are believers in Jesus Christ is that one day we will all be changed, and that's a change that we're going to desire. We're going to be like Christ. One of the many issues in our culture that has changed is the way people view clergymen. At one time, all ministers were addressed by the title of pastor or doctor or reverend or something like that. Today, though, there's a sense of great familiarity that's come into play in people's relationship with the pastor. Many pastors are simply addressed by their first name. Well, actually, I think the Apostle Paul was simply called Paul by the other believers there in the first century. So I guess we are returning to some old ways in that part, in that issue. Here in Leviticus 21 and 22, the the priests of the Jews are being addressed And what was expected of them put them in a category which was higher than the common folk. And perhaps as we walk through these two chapters here this week, we can ask the Holy Spirit to help us clarify how we ought to think about those people called of God who minister the Word of God to us. Get your Bible and join me, please. I mentioned the gospel tract a moment ago. The one in my hand right now is entitled, When You Meet God. When you meet God, it begins with these words. Someday you must meet God. He is holy and he hates sin. And the first two lines after that talk about what the Bible says about God and it emphasizes that God's holy. But then it goes into a section where it says, listen to what God says about man. People are sinners. Man is a sinner. But then we have a great section here. It says, God wants to forgive your sin. Oh, friend, we're all sinners, but God stands ready to forgive your sin. How does that happen? 
This is a clear gospel track portraying the good news of Jesus Christ and his cross work and his shed blood. It's just one of the over 40 tracks in a sample packet I want to send you. Would you let me do that, please? At the end of our broadcast, my announcer will give you some ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. Be ready to do that. If you can't wait to the end, just go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. We'll be glad to send it to you. It is free of charge. If your Bible's open to Leviticus chapter 21, I want to read beginning at verse 1. Here's what the Bible says. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto the priests, the sons of Aaron, and say unto them, There shall none be defiled for the dead among his people, but for his kin that is near unto him, that is for his mother and for his father and for his son and for his daughter and for his brother. Now, I'm going to stop reading right there. Look at the last word of verse three. It's the word defiled. So far, we've had that word twice. Now, picking up in verse four, it says this, but he shall not defile himself being a chief man among his people to profane himself. They shall not make any baldness upon their head, neither shall they shave off the corner of their beard, nor make any cutting on their flesh. They shall be holy unto their God and not profane the name of their God. For the offerings of the Lord made by fire and the bread of their God, they do offer. Therefore, ye shall be holy. For time's sake, let me just stop reading there if I might. Now, if you are anywhere near normal in your thinking, and I'm sure that you are, you're probably thinking about uh, verse 5 when I read it there, this. What is all this talk about baldness and the shaving of their hair there in verse 5? Well, that verse really is just one of the many unique things said to the priest here in chapter 21 about them and then to the high priest as well. As you read through chapter 21, two words ought to stick out to you. Those two words are this, defiled and the word profaned. The key concern here in chapter 21 is that no person in line to serve as the priest become ceremonially unfit or dirty, or as the word profane communicates that no priest become ceremonially wounded, weak, or unfit. Now, before I deal with an outline for chapters 21 and 22, and we'll do that on Wednesday, before I do that, I need for us to take a careful notice of some things and how the priests are described here. In verse 4, I read these words, chief man, chief man. The priests were chief men among the people. They were rulers. They were leaders. This Hebrew word translated chief here is also the word used for a husband and his role in the home. Priests were to be seen as leaders in the community like a husband is in his home. They had delegated authority simply due because they were a priest. In verse 6, we read the words, the bread of God, the bread of God. And you see, the priest got to offer God bread. And by bread, we don't mean just literal bread, but offer to God the offerings there. In the Canaanite nations that surrounded the Jews, the Canaanite priests had to feed their gods. Their gods got hungry. Well, Jehovah, the true and living God, does not get hungry for physical food, but he does hunger for the bread of fellowship with sinners made holy. He hungers for the offerings that enable sinful men to be made right with God. God hungers for the thankfulness and the loyalty of his people and the offerings fill God's heart. This was a unique responsibility that the priest had. In verse 7, we're told this, that the priests, the men of Aaron's line, were holy unto the Lord. The Old Testament priests, they belonged to God. God was their inheritance. If you remember, the Levites did not receive any portion of the land there in the promised land. God was their portion. God was their inheritance. In verse 12, we're told that the high priest is said to have the anointing oil of God upon him. Now, friend, when the oil was poured on the head of a person in scripture days, whether that was a king or priest, 
priest or a prophet, the oil symbolized that that person was unique among others. Their life had a calling upon it, and they were to live out that calling, keep it in their view 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Actually, I didn't read verse 12, but let me read to you verse 12. It says this, neither shall he, talking about the high priest, neither shall he go out of the sanctuary nor profane the sanctuary of his God for, because statements being made now, for the crown of the anointing of his God is upon him. I am the Lord. The word crown is a word that's used to a, of a, an identifying piece of clothing, like the crown on the head of a king identified the king. If you read the Bible about the priest's clothing, he had a mitre on his head, a headpiece that was part of his garments. Now, here the crown is not a piece of literal clothing. It's the oil. When the high priest was set apart, to be the high priest, he was anointed. He was the high priest 24 hours a day, seven days a week. He never took off that role. He never took off his anointing. All right, now that we've said all this, he's got to ask the so what question. Just so what are you and I to take away from today's time in Leviticus chapter 21? Well, let's take away three things. Number one is this. Today, all believers are called believer priests. We find that over in 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. Every believer, young or old, child or aged adult, who knows Christ as Savior, they are a believer priest. We are to be making offerings to our God. To do that, though, we must be clean. We cannot be defiled. We cannot be profaned. No, oh, dear believer friend, when you and I go to church, we got to make sure we're ready for worship to offer God a clean offering, even to sing a song to him. A second lesson is this. New Testament believers are God's priests 24-7. We do not take off the anointing of the Holy Spirit when we leave the church building. Frankly, that's when we need that anointing, and we use that anointing the most. It's easy to do things in for God inside the walls of our local church, but we need to be serving him as believer priests outside. We need the anointing. The third lesson is this, Jesus is called our high priest. And the Bible says in the book of Hebrews, he's always on the job. He ever liveth to make intercession for us. I cannot tell you how many times a day when my mind wants to think wrong thoughts, when temptation comes that I cry out to God and say, Father in heaven, I'm praying to you now to help me. Give me the grace I need to think the way I ought to think right now. And I say this, thank you, Jesus, you're praying ever to right now for me. You ever pray for me. And with my prayer to God, with Jesus' prayer on my behalf, I'm able to come against sinful thoughts, ugly thoughts, sinful temptations, and walk pleasing to him and not be defiled, not be profaned. Oh, believer friend, if you know Christ, you're a priest of God. Let's live like a priest of God. Amen. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.